Hello and welcome everyone to the lecture 5 of EC 3030. So today we will be talking about career statistics. So one of the most important concepts that we will introduce today is the concept of Fermi level. So basically the probability of finding an electron at a given energy provided there is an available state. And then we will use the relationship to find uh, uh, equations for carrier densities in semiconductors, intrinsic, extrinsic semiconductors. All right, so what we are going to discuss today is covered in the section 2.4 of the textbook Pire. All right, so in the last lecture, we introduced the concept of band diagram, conduction band and valence band. So conduction band has a lot of empty states and the valence band are all field states, mostly field states with electrons and the conduction bands do not have a lot of electrons in them. And the way we usually describe the conduction band is by EC, which is the bottom of this conduction band, of this band and EV, which is the top of the valence band. So quite often we will plot diagram that looks like this where we have just EC which is the bottom of the conduction band and EV which is the top of the valence band and then as we have already mentioned we also note Fermi level which we uh, denote by EF. So let's get started with uh, what Fermi level is. So for that <coughs> let's think about how we can find the probability of finding an electron at a particular energy provided that there is an available state at the energy. So the Fermi function here given by this equation tells the probability of finding an electron at a particular energy level E provided that there is an available state at that energy. And this is called, this uh, is also called the Fermi Redux distribution or the Fermi Redux statistics. And here we have this energy called EF. All right. So <coughs> let's uh, look at the behavior of this Fermi function Fe. So here we have this equation written here as well. So let's draw the shape of this function. So in the y-axis, we plot the energy and in the x-axis, we plot the probability. And let's say this is the Fermi level. So first, let's consider the case when the temperature T equals 0. So if T equals to 0, then when E is larger than EF, then you have E minus EF which is a positive number divided by 0 because T is 0. So basically this is infinity. So exponential to the power infinity. So you have 1 over infinity which gives you 0. So if at temp T equals to temperature is 0 then above the Fermi level the probability of finding an electron is 0. So let's use another color. All right. So above the Fermi level, the probability of finding an electron is zero. And when E is smaller than EF, we get a negative number here divided by zero. So exponential to the power negative infinity, which is zero. So basically one over one. So if the energy is less than the Fermi level, then at absolute zero temperature, the probability of finding an electron is one. So at zero Kelvin, this Fermi function looks like a perfect step. All right. So now let's say what happens if you have a temperature which is larger than zero. So the case 
where t is larger than 0. So first we consider the case when e equals ef. So now e equals to ef, then this, this becomes 0, so exponential power to power 0, so basically 1 over 1 plus 1, so you get f value of Fermi function which is equal to half. So at the value of Fermi function, uh, at the <coughs> Fermi level, the value of the probability is half. Now as you can see from this function that if e is positive, e is la, e minus e f is positive, in other words if e is larger than e f, then if there is this value is larger than 1 so then this value will be this will be 1 over 1 plus a value that is larger than 1 so it will be less than half and if e is smaller than e f then this number here will be smaller than 1 so you will have 1 over 1 plus a number which is smaller than 1 so basically if e is smaller than e f then it will be larger than half on the other hand if e is much much larger than kt then this will again become a very large number so in that case this value will become 0 so if e is much larger than e f then it's 0 and it and when it approaches e f it becomes like this and on the other hand if e is much much smaller than e f then this becomes exponential power a negative of a very large number so basically it be becomes very close to zero so if e is much smaller than e f then this Fermi function becomes 1 over 1 plus a very small number so it approaches zero when e is much much smaller than e f so as you go down from e f when your energy becomes starts becoming smaller it approaches 1 as you as the value of energy decreases so essentially the curve looks like this when the temperature is larger than 0 so this black curve is the Fermi function when t is larger than 0 and this blue curve is the Fermi function when t equals 0. Alright, so now the, we have drawn the shapes here again. Again as we have seen in the last slide at t equals to 0 the Fermi function looks like a perfect step. On the other hand when <coughs> large when t is larger than 0 it uh, has it goes from 1 to 0 as the energy increases uh, from below ef to above vf and let's bring back the pen again and as you increase the temperature the transition becomes more and more diffuse all right so in these three cases say this red curve is for temperature t1 then this blue curve over here is for temperature t2 which is larger than t1 and this this green curve is for temperature t3 which is larger than t2 all right in other words at absolute zero the Fermi function is a perfect step function and uh, as you increase the temperature the transition be from <coughs> probability of 1 to probability of 0 becomes more and more diffuse. But in all three cases, the probability of finding an electron at E equals to E f always remains half. All right. So now let's uh, look at the concept of states or what we mean by the number of available states. So here uh, we have, uh, we start with a very simple uh, uh, con uh, simple case where you have a bunch of boxes stacked on top of each other and each of the boxes has, uh, can hold 10 particles, 
each, can, each of the boxes can hold 10 particles and say the height of each of the box corresponds to the energy. So the higher the box is from ground, the higher its energy is. Now let's say these particles follow the Fermi Dirac distribution. So then what you can say is that, okay, so as you go higher, the probability of finding a particle in a box becomes lower, okay. So now let's calculate how many balls or how many particles there will be in each of the boxes. So what we do to find that out is this. We take the number of available states in the box and multiply it with the probability of finding a particle in that box. So in this case, so essentially it will look something like this. So here 10 multiplied with 1, you get 10. But over here, the probability decreases. So a smaller probability multiplied with 10 gives you 6 here, 3 here, 1 here. And in these cases, in the higher, as you go higher, the probability becomes so low that you essentially do not have any particles in this case. All right. So now let's consider another case where the number of available states increases as you go higher. So essentially the size of the boxes increase as you go higher. So again in this case you have the probability distribution given by the Fermi Dirac function and in this case also what you do is you multiply the probability uh, the number of available states with the probability and you get the total number of particles in that box. So this 13 here for example here 18 is the number of available states in this box and you multiply it with the, prob find the probability of finding a particle in this box and multiplying it, you get a number for example 10. All right so what we can do is that we can also plot the occupancy as a function of height. So then what essentially what we are doing is that we are plotting 3 at this value of height, you are plotting 7 at this plot of height. So what it says is that as you go higher is initially your number of particles or number of the occupancy in each of the boxes increases but after some time it starts decreasing again. Although the available number of available states are increasing as you go higher because the Fermi function is decreasing as you go into higher, higher energies, the occupancy will actually decrease as you go above a certain value. All right, so essentially the main point is that to give you an understanding of the concept of available states and then how you use the Fermi function to calculate the occupancy or calculate the number of particle at different energies. Okay. So now let's look at a real case of the semiconductor. So for semiconductors, this is how the number of states is usually plotted. So we use, we use a terminology called density of states. So density of states means that at a given energy, what is the number of states per unit energy? So here in the for the conduction band, we have a quantity called GC, which is called the density of states of electrons in the conduction band. And this is given by this function here. And for the valence band, we have another quantity called density of states of holes in the valence band. And it looks like this. Again, so if, so this, quantity for example gc de represents the number of conduction band states in per unit volume that lie in the energy range between e and e plus de and similarly this quantity gv de represents the number of valence band states per unit volume 
that lie in the energy range between E and E plus delta E. So for example, if you are at this energy E, then the number of states in this small energy range DE is given by GC DE. So this essentially, this area under this curve gives you the total number of states available at this energy E in the range of energy DE around E and similarly for the holes. Now note that for conduction band we have the density of states of electrons and for the conduction for the valence band we have the density of states for holes. In the conduction band the density of states for holes is zero. Similarly in the valence band the density of states for electrons is also zero. All right. So let's do a quick, uh, let's take a quick look at the electron density in a semiconductor. Now in the previous slide, we have seen the density of states for electrons in the conduction band looks like this. And then we have the Fermi function that looks like this. And say your Fermi level is over here. So the density of electrons per unit energy at different energy is simply a multiplication of this and this. And if you do the multiplication, it will look like look something like this. So what we are plotting here is N, which is GC, E, and Fe. This is what we are plotting. So this is the density of electron at a given energy per unit energy and <coughs> so the total so let's call it n prime so this is n prime which is the density of electron per unit energy at a given energy so the total number of electrons that we will have in the semiconductor is given by integration of GC E multiplied with the Fermi function and then multiplied so then DE and it goes from so this is EC so it goes from EC all the way to infinity so the lower bound maybe you can take also minus infinity because it doesn't matter because there is no states for electrons over here and if you do this so this is actually a very complicated integral and if you actually do the complicated integral you finally get an equation that looks like this now here in this equation you have a bunch of parameters so the first parameter here is nc which we call the effective density of states in the conduction band and for silicon, this is around 3 into 10 power 25 per meter cube. So if you know the value of relative position of the Fermi level with respect to the conduction band edge EC, then at a given temperature, you can find out the number of electrons that you have in the semiconductor. All right, now let's look at the whole density in a semiconductor. Now again, just like the previous case, we have the density of states of holes here. And then what we are plotting here is the probability of finding an electron at a given energy. And the probability of finding an electron is F. So probability of finding a hole is 1 minus F. The reason is the absence of electron is a hole. All right. 
So again, you have the probability of finding a hole at a given energy. So then the density of holes per unit energy at a given energy looks something like this. So basically this is P prime at a given energy E is GV the density of states multiplied with 1 minus Fe. So the total number of energy total number of holes that we will have given by this GV E multiplied with 1 minus Fe DE and the limit goes from negative minus infinity to EV where EV is the conduction uh, the valence band H so basically this is the area under this curve and again this is gives it gives this is actually a complicated integral and if you work it out then you will get an equation like this where PE is NV multiplied with exponential of EV minus EF divided by KT now EV minus EF basically means the separation between EV and EF here here and here the parameter NV is called the effective density of states of the valence pan and for silicon the value of this NV is of the order of 10 power 25 per meter cube all right so if we summarize these are the two important equations that we will use again and again in this class so the first one is the density of electrons in a semiconductor and the density of holes in a semiconductor given that we know the relative position of the Fermi level with respect to EC or EV and these two parameters the effective density of states in the conduction band and in the valence band the typical value that we will use in for silicon are this all right 